who's who's uh, who's joining me? Oh, we can uh, kind of show around here. Okay, there you go. Say it. hi. This hey. is Oscar. Hi. And we got Arturo and John and hello, hello. Uh, how's it going? Excellent. All right. Okay. So what hard. I've done is I've cut everything up ahead of time. So it took me mm -hmm. about 50 minutes, and that's actually seen. All right. Long. So you put the oil, so and then you put, I got wrap it up with the oil. oil. In here now. Put more oil. And uh, now there's a little bit of garlic. Is that olive right? oil? It's olive yeah. oil. That's for sure. Yep. Yep. That's uh, I put a little bit of garlic in there. Garlic. Oh wow. Okay. Arturo, could you ask Carla for the uh, Is that crushed Arturo? garlic? Uh -huh. It's in the fridge. Yeah. All the right. pan is the key, correct? The pan is the key, yes. What do you buy that pan? pan uh, on Amazon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was 50 on Amazon, 50 yeah. bucks. And uh, the grill stuff too? The grill is on from Amazon as well. Again, this is all. This is a yeah, Spanish it's straight, pan. So it's from Spain. Uh -huh. This is a Middle, same, little these are all from well, Spain. The that, whole, yeah, that whole setup was about 300 bucks. So. Was that to buy? This is to make the paella? Yeah. This is all it does. Oh, okay. See, yeah. well, my flame is pretty high, so we're gonna turn this. That's down lemon juice. <sighs> All right. Give me a few days. That's a good tack. Um. Okay, so we'll, we'll, right. we'll do uh, we'll do this. You want the garlic? Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's the shrimp. Oh, shrimp. Those are happy shrimp. until the paella getting ready. So that's where a lot of the uh, history or culture in that period, you know, all the dresses and just the culture of, of the, the flamenco and all that comes out of out of those uh, days where they didn't have, the, you know, the technology we have today with the parties and all that. So it was just a group of people, family, you know, big families getting together and they would bring all their leftover food and the men would, would cook the paella. And that's why it's paella, it's, it's for her. Also paella is also the uh, name of the pan. So it's kind of a double, a double, uh, double meaning. Okay. So now we'll, and this is why when you're in Spain, a lot of times if you go out somewhere, they'll have okay. the women serve first. Because usually you have the women. What is that? This is uh, garlic. Uh, garlic I, juice. No. Oh. This garlic juice. So. You have to do this outside? Uh, well, I, a lot of times I'll do it in the garage, but we have um, some of our winter clothes in there. It, it, makes, it makes it really smell like clothes. Yeah, so this is, you can do personal, like personal paellas in a cast iron um, pan. What kind of meat is that? What kind of what? Meat. Oh, this is uh, pork. Okay. Like a pork lion. Pork lion, yeah, and I just cut into small cubes. And so where you learn to do this, Dr. Okay. Um, in 2001, I went to Spain to learn Spanish, mm -hmm. even though my Spanish isn't all that great. I was pretty good for a couple months. I was learning it. Um, yeah. And right. one of my favorite things was we would uh, have a break around 12 o'clock, and it wasn't really time for, for dinner, because dinner was like two or three. Yeah. And so we'd have a tapa. We'd go down the street, and there's this guy who had a little bar, mm -hmm. just a hole in the wall, and so all the students would go and this guy every day would have this pan of paella and for like a buck or two you'd get this little plate yeah. and it was the most amazing dish I ever ate. Oh wow. So, <laughs> and so oh, I wow. said, you know, I gotta figure out how to make this. And so I was just, you know, as a, as a tourist to go around and I saw a book and it was about all the different mm -hmm. tapas and things in Spain. And so I bought it. And that's part of my theme of my channel too, is okay. I'm gonna try to make every recipe in that book. However, uh, we went to this little town which was in Malaga, you know, 
30 miles out of Malaga. Yeah. And they had, oh, you buy the plate for like 10 euros and you go and get, fill it up as much as you want anytime. And they're cooking it right there by the beach. Oh, they just keep cooking and you yeah. can go oh, as many times you want. Out of this world, it was fantastic. Yeah, that's, that's probably the yeah. best right there. Hopefully that won't fall. Now, uh, what I'll do, this is going to be uh, uh, a garnish that goes on top. So it'll be kind of like that. These Lagosine. are shrimp with the head, but it's really intended to um, make it look beautiful. So. You don't, you pale it? You don't take the pill? I mean, it has a... Um, well, I have this shrimp, so that'll go in the paella. This is just going to be a garnish on top. Yeah, you don't need it. Oh, could you could you ask Carla for peas? Peas? Frozen peas? I think we have them. I hope we do. So you do use a lot of oil for making pay, yeah, correct? Right? Olive oil. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to do here is just get a good good uh, golden color. So do you cook the rice at the end, or you either have to cook on the side and then make so it? No, you'll see. I kind of it's a um, compote is what they call it. And you uh, mix it in so it soaks up the flavor. I did langostina over my holiday paella in December. I did langostina, which is amazing. It just really made the dish look really good. Yeah, yeah. So since these will go on top, you know, they, I don't want to cook them a little bit more. They give them a good color. So you gotta do this now. And we got two more things to do. Is this uh, like uh, sausage? These are turkey sausages. Is that a chorizo or? Uh, yeah, that's a turkey. We, we can oh. use any, so, you know, um, the thing about paella and people don't realize it, you know, there's people who make a vegetarian paella, you know, the, the point behind it was just that, whatever he had left over from the week, he would just throw it in there, you know, so. Have you had rabbit paella? I have not, but I've heard people that have made it or had it, so. I mean, I can go. good on top of the paella because what you don't you don't want it to be crispy like you never cooked it. Here we go. Peruvian ceviche. Oh Peruvian. Yeah. And they put tomatoes. 
They have ceviche in Mexico, yeah. but they have Peruvian style ceviche. Uh -huh. And I try it, oh, it's really oh, good. Yeah. Oh, what? Where? Like real? Yeah. Where? In Mexico. Oh. Yeah, it, it's, it's the same that. Uh, oh, yeah. okay, I here's probably had you a ceviche before. Oh, yeah. Here's the uh, deal we're gonna. Pretty good. We're gonna salt this. Because the regular Mexican ceviche is no. It's tomato. No. It's no. We're, we're, gonna, put we're gonna salt this on the side. We're gonna put pink salt, salt huh? Yeah, yeah we like pink, I pink where salt. I went wrong was this step. Too much salt. Yeah. Oh, you put the salt. I did not a couple of months. Why do you put the salt over there? This is the. I learned this from a four star chef, five star chef. Mm -hmm. guy, great guy. And uh, this is his, his way of measuring. So that. Oh, that outside much, in, huh? Yeah, well, that kind of tells you about how much salt is going to be in your pie. Oh, oh, oh. He didn't have measuring yeah, cups? So. I'm sorry? He, he didn't have measuring cups? <laughs> well, I think it just depends on the pie pan and how much salt oh, you want. True. So that should be yeah. that should be enough. Now that that's browning, see? Mm -hmm. Now I put the... And that's a sea onion. salt? I use, I use uh, I don't know what it's called. It's a, a, a pink salt. Himalaya, Himalaya salt. Himalaya. Himalaya salt. I need to cook faster, right? Ah, oh, you're doing a great job. We're moving, we're moving good, I think. Would you be so kind as to get the, um, the, the, the large uh, pot of broth on the stove? Large pot of broth. So you cook the onions till they're translucent type, uh -huh. and then you add the tomatoes and the okay. tomato paste and you cook it and you let it cook for a couple minutes till it gets this that's burgundy a, color. That's, that's a now you rice. add the rice. That's what a, kind of rice do you this use? This is a very special rice. This is a short grain rice. Uh huh. You can buy it any any um, store. This particular brand is actually from Spain. So this is authentic. Mm -hmm. um, this is Spanish rice. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's or not basmati or anything? No, you don't. You don't want to use anything but this type of rice. Yeah, rice is just soaking up all that flavor. Yeah. And we kind of let it kind of cook a little bit. So we got. I got four cups in here. So hopefully that'll be enough. And what kind of uh, uh, broth you put in? Now I I cheat a little bit and I just use a chicken broth. And I think this broth. is down here. Now I I end up toasting. This, this Ooh, is a broth, baby. So I end up toasting that, and then um, what I like to do is just put it in here, because sometimes people will cook it with the broth and they don't use all the broth, so that means you don't use all your sapphire. So I like, to, I like to just add this in. And this is in a Spanish saffron? Um, just any saffron. So, you need saffron. It's a real saffron. Yeah, this is real, I, I, got, I get this from Trader Joe's, so. That's a spendy, isn't it? Um, it can be. They they have little. I use one vial from Trader Joe's. It's like five or six bucks. You can go to um, the World Market and get uh, a really big. You can spend a hundred bucks and get like a couple ounces. So what we're after here. Huh? No, that's, that's right. We're after here is a couple of cups. So this 
that I put like uh, one cup in there, so this will be five. Since we're doing four cups of rice, I need, uh, I need six, six cups. So, you, do, you, you say uh, you say one cup of one cup of water for one cup of rice. It's like a cup and a half of water. So I'm gonna have to ask you to somebody to go inside and get me what do you need? one more cup of uh, hot water from the tap. Just hot water? Yeah. From the tap? Yeah. Okay. So you can take this. Or take that one right there. One cup. One cup. One, just one cup. Hot one. What's that? I'm gonna add first the shrimp. I just kind of sprinkle it in. Typically once a month. Sometimes. Once a month? Yeah. Wow. Typically, a, well, it's been a couple months since I made one. But... No? Let me start. Stop taking these stuff. Okay. Oh, yeah, you would. Yeah. Did you bring the. Um, um, what do you need? Nothing. You got this uh, simmer how long? Uh, until the water goes away and it's not crunchy. So we're gonna you put the lid on when? Um, we turn it off. So we have to cook it until it's, it's all ready. Okay, hey, we're doing good, eh? That's great. Let's take a good while. Shake a little bit of a turn so I can't cut the oh, flame can change when it gets to me outside. Yeah, you see the water evaporate very quick. Yeah. This is sliding to the side, so we'll shake a little bit. As long as it keeps moving, you keep cooking it, right? Yeah. yeah. See that No, 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 exactly, I'm going to keep my taste. <laughs> Very good. It's fantastic. How's that looking? It's first Pretty time good. watching it, you've yeah, been just yeah. eating it, you haven't yeah. seen anybody make it, huh? Yeah, no, not at all. It's very it's, 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 it's good, huh? It's an art. It really is an art. Because I've failed a lot. I mean, 118. The first 50 were tough. <laughs>
smell it. I'm starting to smell it like a little burn. And so I'm gonna let that go and then what we'll do is let it sit. Yeah. So and so it'll turn it up now and we'll get a a good solid flame on it. Yeah, because it's, it's tough, but you can know, you know, turn it around, you know, and uh, you can play with it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You got the only thing you can shake. Yeah. Okay. And um, it will soak it up if you want. We'll let it sit maybe 20 minutes. Yeah. And the sun's coming out, looking nice. Yeah. So what that I've done now is turned it up, and we, what we want is mm -hmm. a, a little burn on the bottom. Yeah. And then uh, you're done. It has a little burn smell. Yep, okay, now we turn it off. All right, so we turn it off. Now we let it sit. And it's voila, I'm gonna take a photo. Birch Community Services began in 1992 with a donated bag of squished bread on the front porch of Barry and Suzanne Birch. They shared the bread with some single moms and other families in need in their neighborhood. Within the following weeks, other food retailers who had heard of the Birch's spirit of giving were donating their surplus for redistribution by the Birch's to a growing number of needy families. The organization was steadily grown to become one of the largest food distribution programs in Oregon and has been within the top 25 organizations in Portland Business Journal's annual list of top 100 Portland nonprofits and has never received a penny in government funds. Music